Amateur Research Essay, Time Management by Ernest Long Chapter 1, Introduction A Somewhat Unusual Project The project is unusual in that the researcher studied his own time management. He later downloaded data sets from the internet and he discussed time use with others, with his friends and his acquaintances. The researcher had more than one purpose with the project. His purposes were time management research as a research subject, out of curiosity to see how he spent his time and to improve his own time use. The researcher may have made some scientific discoveries. And he did learn time management, writing, statistics, computer and admin skills. The researcher had successes and failures from the project. Readers could see his research as that of any researcher or the reader may want to find out about amateur research projects. As well, the reader might see it as decent research for the sake of research. Or they could see the project had other upsides and downsides such as personal benefits for the amateur researcher. Also, the reader might see that it wasn't valuable research for the researcher or anyone else. This essay describes the research project as research, but it also gives a wider context of the project's particular problems and its amateur nature. The book is about an amateur research project on time management that lasted six years and meant 360 days of time use data was recorded, although only the largest continuously of one month's data. Also, the researcher used other sources of data such as a budget personal diaries and a book's I've read notebook. And he compared these direct when they were for the same period. He found the project stressful because of worries about using a computer, about trying and failing and because of having poor research skills. Also, he had worries about wasting time, not doing anything else but using a computer and having poor social skills. Doing the project for more than one purpose may have meant that he kept the project going longer because it made it both more complicated and less directed. The project did improve how he used his time to start with, but after that, he could make only tiny improvements. A few years earlier, he had already made big improvements to his time use without computers. For this earlier improvement, he had kept a book's I've read notebook of what books he had read. And that was all he did for keeping any notes or records. As well, he had health advice on hygiene, on exercise, on diet, sleep and stress. It increased the amount he read and how much motivation he had generally. Nor did he feel so tired or ill. Although he did learn about time management doing office work when he tried managing his time at home using office time management techniques it had disastrous results. He did not find difficulty doing time management in employment. Yet, at home, he spent hours every day on his personal time management. Perhaps business planning tools are not right for home use. Doing work for an employer, it took a few minutes only each day to write a to-do list. A to-do list is your plan for the work you should get on with and finish during one day. And it only took about an hour every so often to make other longer-term plans. He used specialized planning tools for doing his IT projects that did not take very long to use. So very little of his time went on planning when doing office work or IT. The amateur research project that is the subject of this book was done using a home PC that ran AWP and spreadsheet and later a desktop DBMS application. Also, the researcher did the project for almost no cost other than his own time and effort and the normal financial costs from having a home computer. Researcher's Qualifications Writing this book in later life, the researcher had left school at 17 which was a year after school leaving age. He had failed to concentrate on his work and his standard of work was too poor to continue with full-time education. However, he had been a good pupil up to school leaving age. After that, 
he had become bored with school. And he felt pleased when he finally left, as it had been a mistake to stay on. He did qualifications after he left school in computers office software and database software. Also, he did a typing course. He worked in an office and then in IT learning on the job. Also, he did both vocational and academic courses at a local college as an adult. He dropped out or failed some of them and passed others. Chapter 2, Project Goal Setting Before starting the project, the subject did not have any worries about time management. However, doing a time management project, he started to have worries about how he used his time. Several years beforehand when he had no worries, he had felt he would like to do more reading. Someone advised him that it would help him increase the amount he did of any reading if he had a notebook in which he kept details of the books he'd read. This would motivate him to read as he could see what books he'd read and how many. Also, it showed he had worked on improving his social skills. You can see what particular books you have read that you may otherwise have completely forgotten. Or you can see how many you have read in total so that you have not been wasting your time. The Books I've Read notebook increased the number of books that he read several times over in about five years. It took very little time to fill in and was the only time management he did. After several years, though, he began to find books boring. It seems there are only so many books of general interest before they start repeating themselves. This is despite the fact that there are many titles published every year. Now someone offered him a computer feeling he needed a gimmick that might motivate him to read again. Really, though, he did not want a computer as he had read poor reports about them in the press. However, the person who gave him his computer still bought one for him, saying he could see if he liked it or not once he had one. He began using it and now wanted it. The things he could think to do on it were to write a novel and to do amateur research. These used AWP and spreadsheet. Also, he wrote a diary and did a personal goal-setting plan. These were both records for use in his time management project or notes to help him write a novel. The new computer user had relatives who were would-be writers and others who had been to university. As a child, he listened to them talking about their projects. Therefore, he felt his computer might be a way to connect better to his family. Also, when he felt bored, he found his computer amused him. As well, a computer might motivate him to read more. He could write essays and notes on things he had read and not just read randomly or generally. However, he took so long getting used to his computer that he forgot his original plans and there were unfortunate circumstances encouraging more computer use than he would have done otherwise. For example, the researcher had done office work, but he had mainly worked in IT. If he'd had more office experience, it might have helped him to manage his files better generally and to manage better for his time management project as well. Yet that might have meant being a more senior office worker before anyone would expect him to manage his own files or his own time. Nor did he do other computer and non-computer tasks well at home when under unnecessary time pressure. He had taken a typewriting course for basic typewriting skills, but he didn't type well with his fingers on the home keys for several reasons. His teacher on his course did not come round to check he was typing correctly. As well, it seemed that his typewriter had been poorly set up. And the keys were too sensitive to keep his fingers resting on the home keys. When he started office work, his employer expected him to type faster than he had done in typing class despite him giving his correct typing speed on his CV. So this may have caused poor typing skills. A computer program he got himself at home to teach him typing crashed. So that he could do more typing practice, 
he tried to find another different one for sale that he thought might not crash. But he did not see one in the shops and it was before he got internet access himself and could download software online. Eventually he got another copy from the shop of the same typing program again and this time it did not crash. Using it, his typewriting skills improved. Yet he may already have had bad hands by then. When later a careers advisor told him that he would not find more office work because of his age, he thought he could do another different career using the same skills. So he had ambitions to write and do research. However, his thinking he could still get a job using computers when this was not realistic was stressful. And when he practiced doing this work on his home computer, it left him feeling ill. He wrote both fiction and non-fiction. Writing both fiction and non-fiction may have meant he wrote more than was healthy. He also had other encouragement to produce more work. The first novel he wrote was very poor. For example, the material was badly organized and many of the sentences in it were not grammatical. He had read only one book on how to write a novel as that was all he could find in his local bricks and mortar bookshop or library. And he did not write very well when he could not remember what he had done in English at school and, as well, had not been able to revise it. Nobody read his novel and it was a big disappointment. When he got another computer, he thought he might as well have another go to write something again. But this time he would do it better. He started with a short story. This was a way to learn to write without wasting time on a novel if it did not end up being published. Writing a few short stories, he felt relieved that it was a lot better writing than earlier. So he wrote a few more stories. Doing this was both to practice his skills further and for him to enjoy reading his own work. Also, he hoped eventually to get it published that would make it even more valuable. Because, when he wrote it, short fiction was not generally published on its own, he needed to write a book of stories if he was going to find a publisher. When he had written enough stories for a book, he sent them to print publishers but the work was rejected. Later when he looked at it, he could see that it really was not good enough for publication. For example, some characters were too recognizable from life and some stories too short. He still wanted to write and now he made use of old material so he could cut the amount of time he spent on his writing. His new work was better and he wrote some more stories to replace the poorer efforts in the book he had sent to publishers as he blamed these poor efforts for his lack of success. He could not find a print publisher for this new effort either and it was before online publishers. Coincidentally, he met someone who was the editor of a magazine with a small circulation. The editor of this magazine encouraged him to write some self-help articles for the magazine. And the magazine published some of his first efforts. However, it didn't publish his later efforts although he had worked for some time in the hope they would publish more. Getting the internet, he could recycle these articles and his other unpublished material and post them online. Online he could see his readership increased substantially if he wrote new work and did not just keep on his existing work. Finding other online publishers, he re-edited and rewrote stories for their websites and the work they published. During all this, he had not typed well. And now he worried about his hands. He wanted because of these worries about his hands to find a better and easier method of typing that he could use at least sometimes. A better way of typing for your hands is speech recognition. When he tried speech recognition, it did not work well enough for him in practical ways that he could write with it. However, he tried it again when an improved version had come out. Someone had to show him where the program was as he had forgotten by then. He tried it again and found it was better. However, 
he stopped using it again when the program crashed too often. The program required training for it to recognize your voice and he had to retray it all over again when it did crash. It was time and effort to do this. So speech recognition was not very satisfactory. A bit later, when another version of it came out, he tried it again. For the reason of it being improved software or other reasons of his voice being clearer from doing physical exercise and using relaxation techniques, the software this time worked better. He could use it most of the time but not all the time. Sometimes it did not recognize his voice if he had slept poorly or he had a cold. Also, he found it hard to use his voice for more than about one session a day. He could not use it for longer because his voice could become dry and hoarse from dictation. To use the software, he had to talk in a certain way that was not his normal speaking voice. As well, he had to talk for several hours a day or he would not have written enough for the writing projects that he was doing. Sometimes he wrote too lengthy or unnecessary notes. For example, he wrote diaries on his computer and on paper and these were repetitious, boring and long. They went on for many handwritten pages and WP pages without any real advantage to making them. Nor did he see any good reason that he would want to read them again. Examples of reasons that there are to read documents again are for entertainment or for an elucidation about your problems. The notes he made for his time management project were also often too poor. Some of them were longer than he needed. And sometimes they were so badly written that they were unusable. Trying to make a better effort the next time, he wrote overall much more than if his notes had been all right the first time. However, none of this might have mattered if he had typed well with his fingers on the home keys and used speech recognition for at least some of his work. Also, it would have helped him use his computer better and to concentrate better if he had planned his work more and done less typing or typed better and taken breaks more regularly. Problems These are some problems that the subject had. He did not find enough books enough newspapers or enough magazines to read. It was hard to keep to plans. For example, he did not do some tasks because of having so much to do. A time-consuming task he did was he made too many notes about time use. He had poor social skills and poor relationships. Also, he had anxiety and stress. Nor did he find anything to watch on TV. He was trying to lose weight and do more exercise. Also, he found it hard to keep up good hygiene, such as cleaning and tidying. You can do something about these though you might not always improve. Plans for health are valuable. But you can't do them at all if you don't often feel like it or feel tired. As well as just tiredness that makes it hard to keep to plans. You would have to make a plan to do more healthy activities. Boredom was from having done too much reading and watching TV already. Someone does more leisure activities such as reading and watching too much TV because they have more spare time and because there are lots of TV channels, lots of books and lots of magazines available. Other problems than boredom are coping with technology such as computers. TVs are old technology and almost anyone knows how to use them. You may find computers more complicated and harder to learn than you had expected if you are new to them. Making excuses. Look after your health. The rest can wait. Perhaps, you are going against a basic principle when you try to improve your life by goal setting, as you need your health to do any goal. And you need good health both now and in the future to do your goals. Planning is stressful and an effort. Also, trying to do too much is bad for health. The easiest most effective way to do more might be to cut out worry and anxiety, do some exercise and try to lose some weight. 
The mistakes the subject made with goal setting were to set goals at all, to set goals he did not really want or to set goals when he could not keep to them. Setting goals is stressful when you do not keep to them. Boredom can cause anxiety on its own and it is a reason not to keep to goals. So it is doubly stressful when you are keen to keep to goals that you find boring. The subject may have used his computer too much because he found books boring. It was also stressful to set goals that you find boring. Yet the subject had an outdated goal of reading because he did not see what would be a better goal for him. However, he did at one time add decent TV to his list of goals that he wanted to do. Later, when he became bored with just decent TV, he decided to watch anything that was on. But he did not find all of it interesting. So he decided to watch anything that was just alright. But then he found computers more interesting and went back to them. Also, there is stress from using computers such as privacy, running costs and computers not working properly because of viruses, not using them properly or not knowing much about them. Learning a computer can take years and often courses are not available for anyone but beginners. Doing a beginner part-time course might take a year or two. A computer user kept a notebook of his excuses not to have done his goals. He could see that he had done anything he had done for good reasons or he had decided on something that he later forgot. For example, he had felt bored with the TV and with print books and he had then used a computer. So it was wrong to feel bad when he'd only gone on his computer out of boredom and other such reasons. TV and books were boring or he liked using a computer more. Later, he forgot this was why he used his computer. Eventually, he did set some time aside just for reading and watching TV so he had not done zero of it. But, by then, he had forgotten lots and watching again was not so boring. He watched TV before meeting friends as he felt TV gave him something new and it was something his friends would be interested in. It also made him feel more relaxed to watch TV and not use a computer. Also, it made him feel more relaxed to have something decent he could talk about to friends that wasn't about computers. For one reason or another, talking about computers is often about problems. So much of your time on computers is taken up with problems, that if computers are a lot of your time, it is hard to see what else you'd talk about. Sometimes you can feel bad if you got a computer as an expensive gift others felt you wanted, but for which you really had no use. Or you felt you should make an effort to find a purpose for it if you did not already have one. So you can have mixed feelings about computers. Goals everyone has. Philosophers have told us there are absolutes in goals anyone might want for themselves or others. These are for health, happiness, self-esteem and basic needs such as food and shelter. Also, you have a basic need for making friends. And people have a need for a sexual partner. Also, you need to feel that you belong to a community. As well. Everyone has a need to read, for entertainment and to occupy his or her time with something. You work and play better when not too excited or not too bored. The purpose of social interaction is to make you feel better and to boost self-esteem. Really, there is no other reason for it. Often, telling people facts that they need to know is only a small part of communication. Particularly for your personal life, social skills are not to give facts or instructions but to make you feel better. So when you feel better, you have achieved all goals in talking to someone. Better social skills will cut the amount of time spent on chatting by more economical self-expression. And this saves your breath and gives you more time for other things. Sometimes you make mistakes with goals you set other than these general ones. For example, you can try to imagine what would happen if you did succeed in doing more. 
you'd probably become bored with it. You can't talk well about something you find boring. Also, you would not have the pleasure of doing it later if early on you were successful. Therefore, you might have a goal to do just whatever you feel like as you will become bored when you do too much of any one thing. For social skills, you can only talk about what you did recently and about things in which you have a genuine interest. Otherwise, you cannot remember what you did when you have not done anything recently. Also, when you feel bored with something, you do not want to do it. If you did do something you felt bored with, then you would probably not find anything much to say about it. Others would see that you were not very interested in the subject. And they would not want to talk about it with you. Changing the world Thinking about how you might personally change the world is stressful. It is best avoided. Writers and artists can change the world but they must have a plan. Alternatively, they will not only find it stressful but also waste their time. The subject did originally write a novel intending to change the world. It was stressful, he did not write well and it was poor social skills. And when he wrote for amusement, he found it less stressful. However, he was still up at night jotting down story ideas even though it was now only for a hobby. He found writing to try to change the world was stressful and led to poor time management. It wasted time in late nights and spending all day on his computer to get his work down on a WP file. And he wrote poorly, so it was a waste of time for this reason as well. Nor did he do anything else. And it was poor social skills to talk about politics in any way. Writing for so long, he did not have much time for other activities. Also, he took too long each day getting the news. As well, he worried that he should do without a computer because of unavoidable health problems using them. And this was even when some health problems from computers are more avoidable than others are. Hard to avoid health risks are carcinogens, poor concentration and physical wear and tear typing, using a mouse or keying numbers. And you get increased girth sitting at a desk. Also, he could see when he got his first two novels out a drawer many years later that they were merely complaints about how he had been poorly treated by people he used to know. This was really far from his intentions to change the world. And it was now so long in the past. The world had changed without his doing anything anyway or he no longer saw it as what he wanted. Nor were his books how anyone could have changed the world. And this was not even if they had been published. This is if they were even publishable to start with despite the work he had done on them. Changing the world is also poor social skills. It is poor social skills because it sounds bad to talk about the newspapers as though you have something particular to say about them or about politics. This is when you may not have read any political philosophers but only read the newspapers. As well, reading the newspapers and watching the TV news for several hours a day is taking too long to get the news. And it cuts the time you can spend on other activities. Computers are office machines and for work. In your personal life, you do not ever do work for which you are not paid. Nobody pays anyone to read. Somebody who works is too busy to read at all. Nobody pays anyone to watch TV. When you are not creating anything but merely getting entertainment, then you have a genuine hobby. Work is sometimes bad for health and work is not always fun. Hard work and dedication are bad for health. Computers are sometimes just like work. The time management project felt like work at times and this was stressful. He cared a lot about improving his time use and constantly failed. The project did not answer all his questions and it only answered some of his questions after a long time. It does not matter how long you read a book for or for how long you watch TV. 
but it is bad for your health to use computers for too long. As well, not doing stressful things is good for health and increases your longevity. Really, there is no good reason to do something stressful at home. After all, as you make all the decisions for stuff you do at home, you are not helping yourself much when you feel stressed. Health advice for a computer at home is similar to the office. However, you would not want a room in your house to look like an office and this is why homes have a computer against a wall despite it being bad for health. So just by having their computer where they do, home users are harming their health. Home users would probably not want to do office work in their own home if they thought they were indeed using their computer at home as if they were in an office. Yet many computer skills and lots of the health advice come from office work. You can learn about office work from books on time management, admin, anything about computers, report writing and business books. Computers need academic skills such as writing skills or skills from other college courses. Even for hobbies, you can do college courses in them. And at college, they are the same as any other academic subjects full-time students might take to get a qualification. Also, someone might do many hobbies like these for a full-time job or profession. For example, you can do courses in photography, in art or in video. Computers are often only tools for doing things like these and they are not something for their own sake. They are not rewarding to learn because they are just buttons and menus. Also, the software changes over time. Computers are rewarding when you do something on them that you would want to do even without having a computer to do it on. Your computer can help you with these by making them easier, faster and giving you more resources. As well, you can do creative or other hobbies to a higher standard with a computer. Better creative self-expression is more fulfilling. Planning is from others research using the body clock best done in the morning. However, the subject often planned at night. He did this because he felt bad about not doing enough during the day. Sometimes he planned later in the week because he had not done enough during the week. This also meant he had to redo his plans as he had forgotten some of his plan when he came to do it. Or his plans needed changing because circumstances had changed. Also, he sometimes found that his old plan seemed badly written. Health, such as exercise and diet, is important to time use. But mainly, you just have to go out for a jog or do exercise when you think of it and when you are not doing anything else. You could do some exercise in spare moments when you have nothing else much to do. To do more exercise, you could just create for yourself a lifestyle where you had little to do at times and so had more of these spare moments in which you might do some exercise. And you could do the washing and cleaning the cooking and the tidying up if you were not doing something else. Other than this one tip, you need very few other things. Then you can live healthily. Other tips are what you put in your shopping basket, finding out where local parks are to go for a walk in and finding out what other healthy activities you can do. Improved general knowledge cuts stress and improves social skills and time use. You can get lots of stuff online and you can still get print publications. It seems the media is so much of what you might do with your time and about which anyone talks to his or her friends. As well, the media is often the only thing about which anyone does talk. Writing a diary. Keeping a diary is often about goal setting. Diaries help you think about problems and cope with challenges or, as well, they make you feel better from telling your woes to the page. You discuss your problems by writing everything down that happened that day. Someone might write a diary when feeling anxious about things such as trying to improve social skills, but the diary itself takes time and effort and is bad for the hands. Also, it is a waste of time if you do not want to read your diaries again. Your diaries, 
if you did read them again, can seem trivial or mundane. And you might throw them away as not worth keeping. Yet they really did make you feel better when you wrote them. So perhaps it was not a waste. The diary writer still had many of his diaries that he could make available to the researcher. He wrote for over a decade and up to a page each day. The diary writer reported that he found that his life was a lot better since he started writing his diaries. And he could see from reading the researcher's typed up diaries and summaries how much he had improved. The diary writer had mixed emotions now as he had found some things he might not have known otherwise, but that his many hours writing were not how he remembered them. Later, the diary writer did find better ways to communicate his thoughts and feelings, such as writing poetry or other writing. Also, he tried doing some walking and thinking instead of writing anything. He found that during the years he had kept a diary, he had written less and less but his entries were more positive. More budgeting, more cleaning, more holidays, more radio, more exhibitions and more excursions were in positive periods. Also, it was a positive correlation to talk about his education since leaving school. Negative periods were writing about his past personal history, TV, newspapers and writing about writing a diary. In the diaries, there was a cycle of things getting very bad and so then the subject felt he needed more help again and any help he could find. Then he tried to do more of lots of things, wrote about them in his diary and tried to find solutions to his problems and how better to cope with the challenges that he had. When he felt he had solved many of his personal and social skills problems, he tried going out to meet others and to make new friends. However, this was not as successful as he would have liked. He could not make long-term friendships when his social skills were not completely better. Then he felt less motivated and so he made no more attempts to go out and meet others. His problems got worse again and he was again desperate the same as he had been beforehand. So he made another effort. And he did it all over again. When he felt he had better social skills again, he tried once more to go out and meet people. And as part of this process, he restarted his diary again as it might help him. He often just wrote in his diary to make himself feel better. This was doing something to help himself by discussing his problems to the page and it occupied a little of his time. Also, it was a therapy. This was all when normally he had such poor social skills to talk to any real person. The diary was motivating. But the subject wrote more in his diary when anxious. He worried over change or doing long-term goals. The diary itself is sometimes a cause of anxiety. It is making long-term plans and talking about problems. The total of woeful personal journal entries was the strongest correlation to total number of items. All other entries, except for ambition and a few others, increased with woeful entries. It seems having something that you say to yourself will help you. Also, if you think about things like computers, hobbies and interests, healthy living, household chores and about some other tasks, then you often do them in less time and better. This is because you might have solved some problems to do with them. In preparing this book, the researcher compared the data sets of the subject's time use with his personal journal. And he found almost everything negatively related. When you did more of something, you wrote less about it in your diary or vice versa. In his diary, the subject had written about his hobbies for half of the total number of entries. Also, he had said what was on TV hundreds of times. Hobbies were important to him however low he felt or whatever else he was trying to do with his life. He mentioned work very little and a good work forward slash life balance after a poor start and long entries may explain this. 
the subject did less admin and did not overuse computers when he wrote down his problems in his diary. It helped to write, think and read about computers and other problems like them. Overall stress was noticeably less once he'd solved at least some if not all of his problems. Principles of Planning for Computers at Home The first principle of planning is that you want to use the limited amount of time that anyone has to do something you really want. And the second principle is that health is important to being able to plan and, as well, to use your time well more generally. For planning your personal goals, it is very important that you do something instead of something else and you have some control about what you do choose to do. Some things you spend time on have less value but some people still do them. This is because it is a therapy and one they feel that they really need. Or it is because they do something they think that they really should do even if it is not that enjoyable and they spend too much time on it but they probably would like it if they could do it a bit quicker and more easily. However, when they try to do the same amount in less time, they might find they are not able to do so even after some while. Tasks may be time-consuming, but they still live in hope that sometime soon they will be able to do them quicker. They might abandon a goal altogether, change their original plans or reduce the extent of an ambition. Or, in fact, some people do even if it is after a while find all the solutions they were after. So their problems are over. Also, they might do less of another activity that frees up some time. For any of these reasons, a task is not now so time-consuming that it affects all of their life. By taking more time on some goals, you do more work on these goals and so you are likely to see an improvement. To set priorities, you first decide what is and is not important. Success is often achieved just by deciding on priorities and then sticking to them. Also, it is doing things so you do them well. You can change your priorities when they need changing. And making any plan is often just to do no more than ask. What could I do that is better than something else? Then, you have a plan. You don't have to do everything. Would you prefer to have something sooner? Then make it more of a priority. That way you will get it sooner. And this is almost guaranteed to give you success. Lack of success is often just because you are overtired. When overtired, you cannot concentrate. You need to give any plan your full attention for it to succeed. An essential task for health is doing your washing. Easy, quick tasks are things like tidying a bookcase. Urgent tasks are tasks that you have to do now. For example, you need to do them now because you can't do them another time. You don't need to do now non-urgent tasks. And you can plan when you will do them later if you still want to do them at all. This will save time and effort both now and in the future. If you do decide you want to do a task later, then nearer the time you will know more about the task. You will know more of both of what you want to do and of what you need to do to complete it. And once you've made a start, you will know more of the details that you'd like to know and that will help you to do it. So you often plan better nearer the time. Overusing a computer, including using a computer too much because you make unnecessary plans, makes you feel physically ill. Then, you don't feel like doing anything. As well, planning itself can make you feel physically ill and anxious. So you are unmotivated to do the task. Things that take time. The subject had several reasons to spend too long on his computer. He found books boring because he knew the general plots novels had and could guess how stories he started would end. It did not make him happy anymore to read them. Another reason to use his computer and particularly the keyboard too much was that he did not have the internet and so tried WPs and spreadsheets. Before he got a computer. 
he kept notes of books he had read in a notebook. This may have improved his time use without a computer. And nor did he need to make extensive notes to help him with his problems. It increased the number of books he read fourfold after five years from the first year he started to the end of the project. The Books I've Read Notebook increased the number of books he'd read in every year of the five-year period and from 30 to 120 books during the entire period. He read 30 books in the first year that were more than the previous year although he did not record figures for this. However, it may have been under 5 or under 10 books he had read earlier. He made a big change that improved his time use after the first week of the project. But he improved his time use little afterwards. It might be that you cannot change anything much because really, you had already considered the problem thoroughly and adequately enough when you first got your figures. But you might have forgotten this later and so continued with the project. Also, never before seen data is more likely to show big mistakes and so suggest big improvements. You may never have considered some problems beforehand. As well, some problems you can easily see if you have figures, but you don't see so easily if you haven't any. The first week's figures suggested a big change to make. And the subject fully made this change in only another week. This one change saved 20 hours per week. The change was not to chat in front of the TV. You cannot concentrate on both the TV and the conversation at the same time. Doing this saved the subject a lot of time as he used to talk in front of the TV for 60 hours per week. When he did either one or the other, he spent about 20 hours on each. And, although this saved 20 hours per week as we've already said, he could as well concentrate better on each one if only doing one at a time. So he got more out of TV and chatting for less effort. He saw that he might need to change how he had done it earlier because it was for such a large amount of time. For the entire length of the project, this not talking in front of the TV was the only improvement the project made. He tried other things that were unsuccessful such as to read more to improve his social skills. They were unsuccessful as he only read anything different when he'd read enough so it assuaged his original interest. When you spend time on something, it cuts the time you have for other activities. And particularly this is if it takes a lot of time compared to your overall time, such as hobbies and studying. However, thinking about such direct mathematical relationships did not seem helpful. Yet some hobbies do have positive correlations to study, such as the cinema. It seems you cannot both study and do all the hobbies you would like. But then this is just what anyone who has ever studied knows already about time pressures studying. TV takes a lot of time and so the television is important overall to time management. When you watch for longer sessions. It increases the total amount you watch TV in any week you do this. Also, watching more TV but not doing more reading increases the amount of time you spend socializing. The researcher speculates it is seeing real people on the TV, the common social situations shown and other people watching TV that encourages chatting and socializing in your own life. At weekends, the subject read less when he watched more TV but during the week might do more of both. Really, in one way, you cannot improve your time use because you often only do what you feel like. And this is despite your best intentions. So doing a lot of planning is a waste of time as from this it can't work. Also, you can spend a lot of time just making plans. The time management project was a worry because it was all must DOS, should DOS or ought to DOS. Yet people often just do anything they find easiest and that is interesting. The subject often found fault in his time use. And so he tried to change it. 
This went on for years without making any big changes but always living in hope of achieving the dream of better time use. For example, he had a goal to read more as he felt it was important to read. But he could not start a book when he really found books boring. Yet he had this outdated goal as he often still felt that he really should read more. Doing only things you feel like doing as you inevitably do, you do not do anything on your plan. As well, because you are disappointed that you haven't kept to your plans, you spend a long time rewriting them and trying to find ways to improve your time use. People do some things the same at any time. But other things they do mainly at certain times only. You do not have to chat only at the weekend if you have someone you can talk to on weekdays. Writing a diary or writing essays is not by chance. This might be because of tiredness or anxiety. Reading novels or watching TV is by chance. The researcher found this by the chi-square test for the days of the week against time doing the tasks. Chi-square compares the figures for each day of the week with the proportion you would expect for those figures, such as one forward slash number of days in a week equals one seventh. A statistic of zero shows it could happen by chance. And more than zero shows it did not happen by chance. He found that. Goals plus social equals x, where x is a constant. The constant was about eight hours each day. This was only on days the subject felt less anxious. On weeks the subject felt anxious, he had fewer than 10 hours per week on goals. And when not anxious, he had up to 110 hours on goals. He took time using his computer, socializing, sleeping poorly and on breaks. Also, the graph skewed to the left as most days were zero or one hour on goals of reading or watching TV. A few days only showed more time on goals and this went up to about 12 hours possible. Planning and setting priorities can cause anxiety. For example, the subject did not consider TV a desirable goal. And so he worried about wasting time on it. Problem solving and feeling you are not keeping to plans is stressful. The subject was keen to use his computer and this is what he did most days. However, this was not a goal as reading was more desirable to him. When he wrote about something in his diary, he did it less. For example, when he wrote about admin or computers, he did them less. Thinking about the problem might have meant he found solutions and these solutions saved time. The researcher wanted to see if things he had heard about time management showed in his data. For example, he had heard that TV reduces reading and non-TV hobbies. Yet he found from time use analysis, more TV meant more other hobbies. As well, when the subject read more, he watched more TV. This was, though, only on weekdays and not weekends. And the more TV the subject watched, the more he socialized. So the TV was not all bad for you as the researcher had thought it was from a casual reading of newspaper reports. Or perhaps it was a more complex picture. Would you like to know how everyone spends his or her time? Is your time use usual or unusual? What can you learn? The most common recreation is TV, music and video. Most do these. About 40% read on any day, 15% have a hobby, a few percent only go out to a cultural event on any day and 1% study. Other activities are socializing with about half the population chatting for several hours a day. You watch TV and read if you're retired or you cannot get out and you do hobbies if you are young and if you have a car. The subject read a lot and watched TV and DVDs, which is usual. He began serious studying after someone gave him a computer, which the data showed is common with recreational study. Chapter 3, Health You have nothing if you don't have your health. Overdoing things will make you ill. 
These two sayings are not new though saying computers and, in particular, planning cause ill health might rephrase it. You might avoid unhealthy activities, do them less often or try to make them less unhealthy. And if you still do tasks that have known health risks or do tasks without regard to health, then you really may get into poor health. Health advice not to use computers a lot causes mixed feelings. This is when they offer so many benefits, such as to do hobbies or to solve personal problems. Yet computers as well give computer users poor concentration and take a lot of time. Other things and not just a computer affect time use. Good personal hygiene increases time spent on goals. Laundry days and the day or two after were bad for poor personal hygiene. Spending longer in the bath and having more baths also increased time spent on goals. On laundry days, the subject was six times more likely to feel worried and so do very little compared to non-laundry days. The subject found that he wasted time with his computer. Often hobbies were stressful when he did not know how to do them properly. Hoping his computer would help with his hobbies made him lazy about learning to do them normally. In particular, he found it took longer to learn things about his hobby than it should do. It was also a worry because it felt like it had wasted time. And he had used his computer a lot for little gain. It's work. They say that someone who is a workaholic often cares too much about his work. When you intend to promote or sell your own creative work and you care about readers, about money or about vanity, it makes you like a workaholic. However, it may not have occurred to you that you have a poor work forward slash life balance when you are a hobbyist writer posting things online. In one way, you do not have to do the work when it is just a hobby and nobody is paying you for it. And in another way, it is very much like work if you are trying to get more readers even if it is only as a hobby. Also, trying to get more readers for the sake of vanity and using business ideas to do so can seem like a lot of work. Posting creative work online involves computer and marketing and business skills. You might work harder at your hobby so that your work is more publishable. Visitors to websites you realize from things you read, are real people with normal lives and normal expectations for things they see online. They don't just exist in the cyber world. As normal people, they generally only want to see creative work that is of a high standard. And this is online or anywhere else. Art, doing creative writing, making videos and, as well, photography are, to some people, normal work an employer pays them to do. You can study almost any hobby at school or college. And they teach these subjects so students can get jobs. Many earn a living creating stuff. Also, creating stuff involves a lot of effort. And for making an effort, you would normally expect payment. You might need a high standard of computer skills to produce a large or technically competent output. And you'd need a large technically competent output to get commercial or critical success. Competence with computers is usually found only in people who do well-paid jobs or students. Is IT possible to keep IT still a hobby? Writing without intending anyone but you to see it often does not seem like very much work. But writing intending other people to see it can sometimes be a lot of work. Creative Arts Computer Software can help you do a creative hobby. You could do your hobby a lot better using a computer even without using all the features you get with some software. Some people want computers for doing creative arts because they have really very little talent to start with such as if they were doing it normally. Other more competent hobbyists want a computer so there is less drudgery in doing creative arts. Not as good hobbyists rely heavily on computers to be able to produce anything that is even a reasonable standard of work. Both may overuse computers. 
you may also have other stress using computers to do creative arts. For example, you might have a high creative output you could lose if your computer crashes or you get viruses. Also, you might not have made a plan yet for keeping works in the long term. As well, being able to produce creative works easily and quickly might mean extra drudgery even if some of the drudgery has been removed. For example, you might want to polish pieces you are posting online. And although easy to do with computers, it is still time consuming and like hard work sometimes. To cope with the workload, you can use your existing software better. Also, you could get more hardware and software if you want it. Some tasks you do for hobbies are time consuming even with a computer. And they are time consuming no matter how much help you got from your computer. Also, even for a hobby, your computer skills might not be good enough. Nor can your computer make up the deficit if you don't know normally how to do your hobby. As well, a computer might not make up only for those skills you lack. But you could think for a long time that it would do this. It is time consuming and hard work to make a start but then find that you lack basic skills. And you might find after much disappointment that you really do still need creative skills even with a computer. Also, even with computers, there is still some drudgery. But you often have less drudgery with computers than other methods. And this is particularly if you use computers correctly. Tasks can give you mixed feelings if they take too much time or still seem like hard work. Sometimes, you do eventually produce good quality work that you couldn't do to start with. And your computer helped you to do this when before you couldn't have. You still need the normal skills to do any art that you would have had to learn in the past as well. And this is in many ways just the same as it has always been for any artist or writer. But your computer can help you to learn the skills that you need. This really is different and better today. Today you have computers for creative arts as you have them for everything else as well. Some skills are just the same as they ever were. Some have changed and some completely new skills been added. Perhaps you should just try to do your hobby as a hobby with all a hobby's normal challenges and joys. And this is even if you use a computer or computers make it easier. Still, you cannot really enjoy using computers if it is all literally just pressing keys on the keyboard and clicking a mouse. But if you had a good knowledge of a hobby or pastime, you can do a lot more with the software than other less good hobbyists. And so you would want a computer for your hobby. Also, you would assume any keen hobbyist had a good knowledge of his hobby. Or, if they were new to it, they would soon learn about it if they were genuinely interested. Also, if anyone wanted to do anything for a hobby or on a computer, then they would read up about it and try things out they had read. And this might be enough to cope with many computer problems you hear people complaining about. Even a little knowledge of art or a hobby might mean you used your computer better. This was when you could see what you wanted it to do. They say that no hobbyist wants a computer to do it all. And right now art software only helps an already competent hobbyist but does not replace him. You may overuse computers just because you click on too many buttons when you are an inexperienced hobbyist or computer user. However, you can learn more about your hobby so you do a hobby that is a genuine hobby and not just a computer hobby. Look after your health and the rest can wait until later. The subject wanted a computer to begin with because he felt bored with books. Also, he thought that using a word processor to write essays might give him a new interest in reading. All this meant he kept a possibly outdated goal of reading. It was poor time management, as he did not feel like keeping to outdated or poorly thought out goals. However, he did not see what other goals would be better. Computers have a health dowsid. And you are likely to be called a computer bore if you talk about them. 
but he was also bored with reading novels. This was when he knew how most novels he read would end. Also, he had read much non-fiction. And now he felt bored with them. He found newspapers and magazines boring as well. And he had mixed feelings about computers. They did help him occupy his time. And computer hobbies were something new. But he worried about overusing computers and not doing normal things. These mixed feelings were stressful. This was as he felt that he really should be doing something else with his time. Also, he spent many hours planning how he might change things for the better. Planning is stressful and it meant he overused his computer. Also, he had less time for hobbies. For a hobby, someone wrote reviews and criticisms on his computer of books and films. He did it to pass the time. When he became better at it, he did it a bit too much. Now, it seemed too much like work. And this was even if these reviews had been more interesting to read again. It was still time-consuming despite his using his computer well. And he started all over again worrying about how long he spent on his computer and if he was overusing it. The subject became anxious if he had not done much else other than his computer. Also, it was stressful to set other goals and then not do them. He actually liked using his computer and had things he could do on it. As well, he found it hard to get off it. But, later, he felt using his computer was only an excuse not to start doing other things. Other goals not on his computer he still wanted to do but never got around to them. And he had even wanted to do them before he got his computer. He had read some negative things about computers that said they were poor for a hobby and bad for health if used a lot. This was, though, when he sometimes felt that he liked his computer and was bored with anything else anyway. It seemed he had done other things already. Perhaps, if you use computers to have a healthier lifestyle, then you are going wrong when computers are bad for health. Planning is stressful and an effort for anyone. Having a computer, you do more of it. Also, you have time pressures from having so many hobbies you can do. As well, you can get more movies and other entertainment. This is in addition to all the normal things you might do to occupy your time that you could still do. However, a computer can help you to make a plan that might work for you despite the problems. And this is even if eventually all you see is that you were trying to do too much and have to scale some of it back. Also, trying to do too much and having time pressures is bad for your health. Still. You might do more and plan better if you were not so anxious to start with or you did not do things that genuinely wasted your time. Such things are watching too many music videos only to see the pretty girls, writing extensive or repetitive diaries when you really do have something you could be getting on with and other things like that. The best way to do more goals might be to reduce anxiety generally. You can get better sleep. Eat healthier, keep your home cleaner or take a shower if you feel anxious. Also, you can take enough time to do anything that you find reduces stress without worrying as well about the time it takes. And do some exercise. As well, it would really help to lose some weight and not worry about your appearance or problems from not being physically fit. These are often easier than other goals are as there is a lot of advice about them online. You just have to make time for them and not spend so long on your computer. Improving your health is never time wasted. You can exercise regularly and do other things regularly. Examples are such as washing, cleaning, cooking, taking dietary supplements or medications and going to bed at a regular time. However, there is other stress from using computers. These stresses are such as privacy, expenses from them or computers not working properly.
Learning a computer can take years and often courses are not available for anyone but beginners. Also, you might worry because computers are sometimes expensive gifts someone feels you want but for which you may have no use. Or you can have mixed feelings about computers when you hear people talk about how wonderful they are but you do not see that yourself. And this is even if you try to use one for the wonderful things they say you can do on them. Often then, you don't find them so great. But people don't listen to what you say and merely repeat the press they have read about them. Also, you can find them harder to use and that they take longer to use than other people seem to spend on them. Other people who find them easier might have better general learning skills, have done them at school or college or they have somebody who can give them some personal help with their computer. Research into goals, into sleep and into hygiene. The researcher also used data sets from the Internet of Time Management Diaries. And he assumed that poor hygiene increased illness, which then increased hours in bed. Also, the data showed poor hygiene might sometimes decrease goals. However, it was a complex picture. He did find a perfect correlation with gardening, with reading or with attending meetings to sleeping for longer. The researcher speculates that gardeners may pick up dirt, rub their faces or don't wash their hands. Or they may read books without washing their hands. Also, as a perfect correlation was attending meetings, one person may pass it to another. Or it is germs from close contact and not gardeners going to the same meetings. Poor sleep can come from various causes and not just from poor hygiene. For example, stress or self-esteem might both affect sleep. Some less hygienic activities improve sleep such as helping out ill neighbors or having a pet. As well, going to work reduced long sleeps. Cleaning more often, but for less long each time, might be healthier. Older people who had lived longer often clean like this. Cleaning like this may be an earlier or a later habit but the researcher did not study this further. More research from time management diaries. From the subject whose time management diaries the researcher intensively studied, the researcher made these findings. First, the book will make some points about the material in this chapter. Looking after your health is not of course the researcher's idea. But he has not seen anywhere else if when computers are poor for health, it means they are also poor for goal setting. Anecdotal evidence shows physical health concerns about computers caused stress and worry to users. On one reading at least, plenty of health advice about computers gives good reasons to worry that really should concern anyone who uses a computer. It would seem that this is for almost any computer use but particularly using them for too long each day. Health problems affect goal setting. But computers gave health worries. Also, they were used for goal setting and were used for doing the goals themselves. Having ambitions you use a computer for may cause worry about overusing computers and about goal setting itself. A computer used well can save work but if used poorly it can generate work. As well. There are worries about how much to use it and how much to do other things. Non-computer activities affect time spent on goals as well. The researcher found that missing meals could be the reason someone is less active, as missing meals, he does less reading, TV or other goals. In his research, the total number of tasks each day was a perfect correlation with the total number of meals each day. This perfect correlation was by the count of meals and all tasks. As well, there was a strong correlation with total hours on goals with total number of meals. There is an ideal time to get up in the mornings. The researcher found it was about 8 to 9 a.m. in his study. Being up earlier meant he did fewer goals and being up later meant he did fewer as well. Washing can increase time on exercise or vice versa.
Reading reduces anxiety by comparison between books I've read and diary data sets. The researcher found a minus 0.4 correlation for anxiety and reading. However, saying in your diary you had finished reading a book is sometimes when feeling stressed. It's not a genuine problem. Someone often wants to find solutions to what they see as genuine problems. But looking for solutions can cause short-term anxiety. And it can cause long-term anxiety if you don't find solutions quickly. The researcher found that writing a diary causes anxiety or anxiety causes writing a diary. You can feel better that you've told your woes at least to the pages of your diary. A diary can also be a way of making notes to solve problems. You do not write as much in a diary when not worried and your diary may have only been for a therapy. Or you may find solutions to genuine problems. Talking about worries is poor social skills and you might only get good social skills when not worrying as much. It seems, though, that talking about worries and problems gives you plenty to say but not very good things to say. You are likely to bore your friends and waste both your own time and theirs. Healthy computing. Upside and dowsed. Computers have a dowsed in that they are sometimes unhealthy, take time and cost money to run. Also, computers can take a lot of time to get used to so you use them productively. And you often use computers healthily if you use computers productively. You can try as a goal to use a computer productively. Then that might as well solve other problems. Or you could try to use your home computer for less long by trying other ways of doing things. You have possible harm from any computer use but particularly if you use it poorly or for a long time. Still, you can change how you use your computer and how you work so it is healthier. For example, you can use the least effort or fewest keystrokes, type well and take breaks. Computers give out radiation all the time when switched on. So using them less is important for health. Use the best file type, such as for figures use a spreadsheet, as this saves time. And plan your computer use so you use your computer less. A good tip is to try not deleting any files permanently. This means you save time not starting a new but similar file if you want to do a similar task again. Faster, economic and more convenient printing means that you are more likely to print and you are less likely to read from the screen. As well, you can get a more economical printer for just a little extra money compared to a cheaper printer. And you can change the printer settings to print faster and use less ink that will save money and time. Boost confidence in a moment. Using a computer badly is sometimes because of poor self-esteem. However, you can also decide in a moment that you won't worry anymore. And this is even without doing a lot of reading or anything else. You can decide that you deserve what you have and that you're not a bad person. And you can do this in an instant. Then all your worries could be over. Or they could be over at least for now. And that includes your computer worries as well. Poor self-esteem affects health. Someone may not pay attention to health issues because they don't see how it matters when they feel so bad about themselves. Yet they really should follow all health advice and not instead only follow some health advice or none. To cut the health risk, you have to change how you work the work you do and use your computer less. This is demanding for someone with low self-esteem. As well, if you have better self-esteem, it helps you decide for what you want your computer and you don't just use it out of worry. For example, a worried person may constantly look up things about their worries and make notes about them. This can sometimes help worries when you will feel at some time that you have already had all the information, all the help and all the advice you need or will ever be able to get. However, it may lead to spending too long on your computer if you resolve issues this way. 
Better self-esteem helps you to plan. Often, when you have better self-esteem, you will find that planning is easy. This is because you know exactly what you want to do and you do it. As well, you will solve any problems more easily and even solve big problems before you start. So you don't spend time, feel worried and take too much effort on such worries later. You may not even see what the problems were that had previously bothered you once you plan better and have better self-esteem. For example, someone had poor sleep. However, when they felt they really could do with a good night's sleep, then they were able to sleep better. All they did was keep an eye on the clock and finish off all they wanted to do. Then they switched everything off and got into bed. Using a computer to plan has health implications. Making use of a computer to plan may have health implications particularly if you use it for long periods. Using a computer too much is too much radiation from the screen and this leads to poor eyesight and poor concentration. This is because you are using a computer to do a plan and a lot of typing of plans is bad for health. Poor posture leads to back problems and other disability. Sitting at a desk is unhealthy. There is not much air above a desk. And sitting still for long periods of time affects circulation in the legs and can lead to a heart attack. Also, using a computer too much is too much radiation from the screen and this leads to poor eyesight and poor concentration. And computers give out radiation all the time when switched on. Word processors help you to plan. Knowing more features of a word processor gives more readable better edited and more understandable plans. You can plan quickly, easily and better. As well, you might find that less computer time will cut stress and health anxiety. A useful tip to help concentration is to use the navigation keys. Don't just have your own files. Instead of using your computer, you could read books, read newspapers. Read periodicals and read magazines for things that you want to know. And you could watch TV or video for information about all kinds of things. This reduces computer use and so reduces health risks. Is there any of your own files you could get from a published source? Then do so. For studying and research, you could get books, magazines and articles about the subject. And you do not have to do so much original research or keep so many of your own notes that you type by hand. You will find that getting a book or magazine or any other source of information that is already in the right format reduces the need to type or write your own notes and reports. For example, someone might type their own report just because the book or magazine article is not the length and style they would prefer. You can find one more the length you want and other preferences. Making use of many of the computer software's features mean a computer is easier, faster, less frustrating and less stressful to use. If you think about being more productive when using a computer, it often means that you will use it in a way that is easier and less effort. As well, use a printer so you don't spend so long in front of a computer screen. Understand the software better by learning more of the features. Learning every feature of your software should mean you work faster and better. It may take a little time, but it can save time if you use a computer a lot. Type well. When you type a lot with a computer keyboard, you should type as well as a typist could on a typewriter in the past. Some find using a word processor less they use a computer less. It seems word processors are a key heavy and time-consuming program. When you do prepare work on AWP, type well and you'll concentrate better and not need to do as much editing or proofreading of your plans or of your notes. Don't do so much typing. However, you can also copy and paste from the internet or you can download documents. Then, you can edit to get the notes you want. Scrolling. 
Many features of the software have health issues such as scrolling that affect the eyes and concentration. And it can affect the brain behind the eyes as well. You can use the software's features to do this less. Or you could use a computer less if you did less on it. So that would also be less scrolling. Some features need fewer mouse clicks, such as buttons or select, right click, menus. You can't open many files in a short time because of the flash you get when you open them. So work on only a few at a time and don't scroll or jump around too much within them. You can have one file instead of several files. And then within this file, you can use navigation features. However, this has the disadvantage that large files or files that have many features may crash. Also, you need to know more about the software to find things you want to within a file. Keeping files open is quicker and more convenient. And opening more than one file at once uses fewer mouse clicks. Opening files quicker reduces eye astray. Chapter 4, Quotes How did the book find these quotes? In this chapter, the book will describe briefly correlations and multiple regression analysis to explain the section that follows, common sayings about time management and later sections of quotes. This is because the reader might want to know a little more to understand the quotes better. However, for a fuller explanation a reader would have to go to a textbook on statistics. The reader if he or she feels like it can just read the quotes. All the reader might need to understand about statistics is that a statistic says that some ideas about everyday life are true scientifically. Common people thought them true from stories they had heard and talked of to each other. Common people are people not scientifically trained. The statistics the researcher used were correlations, were totals and were averages. A correlation is when one thing increases and then another thing increases. As well, it could be if something else increases, then another thing decreases. These correlations are weak or strong, such as something may cause a lot of the increase in something else or only a little. All the correlations that affect one thing if added together would have an effect of causing an increase of greater than 100% in it. This is impossible in life but possible using the correlation statistic because some correlations also have effects of increasing each other. Multiple regression analysis resolves many of the problems that you get from simple correlations. The researcher designed a correlation table. It was not a multiple regression analysis and the total influences on goals added to over 1000%. Unfortunately, the data is now missing and the researcher cannot do a multiple regression analysis for this book. The researcher saw that there were many common sayings about goal setting that stood out in the correlations. These next few sections are quotes that stood out like this in his statistical analysis of time use. Common sayings about time management. You haven't finished chatting over the weekend and you want to inflict it on us Monday morning. How was your weekend, what did you do? On Mondays and Fridays nobody does any work. And the only work done is on a Wednesday. You plan at the start of the week. Don't plan any other time. Do your hobbies any time. Write up a study timetable and stick it on your wall. Try to do 20 minutes exercise every day. A little organization every day will go further than a big organization occasionally. You have your chores to do every day and you cannot wait for your house to get dirty. Every Monday morning you switch your computer on. When are you going to learn there's more to life than that? Intentions to do more lead to boredom or stress unless you are going to do what you've planned. You watch TV every day, so try doing something different this evening. Go to the park more often. Don't only read at weekends. Read the newspaper every day. Practice typing consistently. 
Plan for the week and do not plan only for the first few days. Don't forget at the shops. Try going out at weekends like everyone else. All you need is a study timetable and to stick to it. That's your planning for your studies. It's easier to do hobbies than studying. And it is easier to watch TV than do anything else. Take a break from the computer and don't take all day on it. It's not worth it for anything you get from it. Why not write an essay on a Monday and not a Thursday? Try not to daydream looking forward already to next week. And try finishing this one first. Get this week finished first. Keep your folders organized all the time and don't have paper overflowing from them. Also, you need to do your filing. It will reward you to do it. Relax in the bath over the weekend. Clean regularly and not all at once. Dirt builds up over time however well you clean your house in one go. You feel tired towards the end of the month and the end of the week. A routine you have wrongly got into the habit of doing is that you plan, stop planning, plan again, stop until the end of the month and start again next month. You have a big clean towards the start of the month and then don't do enough. At the start of the month or start of the week, you do more and then later on you do less. Don't fret about what you want to do, but go ahead and do it. This is when people's plans are often so simple they should really do them without any problems. If you talk a lot every day, try not talking so much. You have only so many breaths in your body for your entire life. And you may not realize how much you talk to all your friends. You talk more than you realize. It is possible to do your hobbies any day because you're interested in them. And you think about them all the time. You should stick to your exercise program. And don't stop and start. When you plan well, you do well. Then you lose the track a bit. You feel you didn't plan well enough. Instead, you just don't keep to the plans you have already. Your plans will succeed only if you have kept to them. Quotes from Budgeting Reading books, you don't read newspapers as you find books so much better. And reading books, you don't read periodicals as you think books explain ideas better. Bookworms don't get out much or use the internet. Nor do they pay attention to their appearance. Reading newspapers, you also read periodicals. And reading newspapers, you don't chat about politics because you've already read all about it. Reading newspapers, you are not in the internet age. Toiletries are cheap. Newspapers cost a little and are worth the investment. Read all about it. Eating out, you don't eat at home. Computer nerds don't eat well. Someone who doesn't pay his library fines scoffs his food. You need to get toiletries and smell nice if you want to go out. Going to the gym, you need to shower more often. Wash your hair when you shower after the gym. Don't read a newspaper at the table. Haven't you seen rich well-dressed older men with a newspaper under their arm? More time use quotes. Anyone only has time and money. When you have much time but not much money, you can spend the former to get the latter. To have both money and time while young is the goal of anyone who doesn't like work. When you have money but not time, you think the man rich who has time but little money. Money is easy come, easy go. Time once spent is a treasure chest that you can never refill whether by borrowing, whether by begging, whether by stealing or whether by hard work. Success dresses a young man well. But an older man will never look better than when he was young, unless he wasted his youth and now wants to work hard for the rest of his life. Money makes you more attractive. Ask any middle-aged man wearing a gold or diamond watch. You are truly rich if you know how to use your time. Money does nothing for the young.
All they need is their looks and if they can't use them to get the things they want, then they really have nothing going for them yet. A man who looks after his health at 20 will live until he's 80. A man who starts looking after his health at 40 will live until he's 60 or 70. And a man who never looks after his health will die young indeed. It's never too late. Nobody ever succeeded in anything unless they first tried. Practice makes perfect. When you didn't do it at 20, you can do it at 40. If you didn't do it at 20 or 40, you can do it at 60. You only have to succeed a little for most everyone to think you are a great success. Few men are truly successful. You live and learn. Past failure is the greatest spur to future success. Chapter 5, Project Design Data Sets For the project, the researcher analyzed the personal journals and diaries, time used diaries, a year's budget spreadsheets and a five-year notebook of books that the subject had read. His time used diaries were for largest continuously of about a month and several week-long periods. And the subject kept this time use journal for over a year. As well, the researcher downloaded data sets from the internet. The data sets were for personal time management. And the researcher conducted informal interviews about time use and computer use. The researcher ran two projects together for the same period. In one project, the subject noted how he spent his time in hours each day. And in another project, the subject kept a personal journal. The researcher could analyze the data sets together. As well, he had a book I've read notebook that was for the same period as the personal journal. For time management and personal diaries, the researcher designed a paper standard form on AWP. On this standard form for time use, the subject noted the date, the task and the time. In the personal journal analysis, the researcher noted the date and the item mentioned in the journal. The researcher also noted woeful entries. Woeful entries were often due the subject said to anxiety. The researcher could use the diaries to analyze worry periods using this value for woeful entries in correlations with his other entries. As well, he used them with other data sets if they were over the same period. The diary used similar phrases that the diary writer could remember writing like this when he felt bad. And the researcher counted these phrases to give him a figure for monthly periods. And he used this to compare woeful entries against other entries in the personal journal, woeful entries against actual tasks in the time management diaries and woeful entries against the number of books the subject had read. It was assumed woeful entries were a good measure of how anxious the subject felt. So these correlations are relationships between other things and anxiety. In summary, data sets were produced for books I've read, time use, personal journals and for the subject's budget. And the researcher did a comparative analysis of actual time use and personal journal budget and time use and books the subject had read and his personal journal. As well, he downloaded spreadsheets of time management surveys from a website. Also, the researcher had notes of informal interviews with several respondents about time use and computers. Records The researcher used a DBMS application to data enter, store and do basic numerical analysis and he used a spreadsheet for more detailed analysis. He used AWP for notes. And he used these for the advantages and disadvantages each has for a research project like this. As well, the hardware and software used was mostly, but not all, within the researcher's own existing computer knowledge and his existing skills and experience. To do research on your home computer, first collect data. You can do this by designing a form on a word processor, printing it and filling it in by hand. 
the researcher designed a paper standard form to record time use. And in another project, he designed a form to categorize entries in personal journals. As well, he kept shopping receipts and did a budget. He did this for a budget analysis and later compared it to time use. Also, he kept a book's I've read notebook. Next data input this data into an application, such as one designed with DBMS or spreadsheet software. The DBMS application has advantages and disadvantages over spreadsheets. Next, analyze the data in your database application or spreadsheet. The researcher noted what the diary said such as the TV, going out or personal feelings. Then the researcher data entered these to do numerical analysis. Remember that a diary is a record of what the diary writer wrote about and not an exact measurement of what he did. To see what the diary writer had written better, the researcher typed up his handwritten diaries and read the manuscript through several times. As well, he summarized them and then wrote a brief or summary still. He had typed them up in a few days and could now read them through in a few hours. He made mistakes with running the project, such as when he did not record data correctly because of carelessness and poor data inputting. For example, there were mistakes four times after midnight. This was because he did not know how he should data input these times, such as whether times were for the same day or the next day. Also, he only had about one month's continuous data. Continuous data are necessary for correlations and multiple regression analysis. However, you can compare averages each day across periods. Also, the data recorded was probably different to the data not recorded. The data were different because data was often only recorded when the subject felt more optimistic. The subject's time management planning. Basic planning. Write a plan. Keep to the plan. Planning in more detail. Analyze data. Make a plan. What metrics do you use so that you know if your plan is succeeding? Measure the metrics and review your plan regularly. Adjust your activities and change the plan again when you need to change it. Time use plan. For time use, the plan from the above is. Design a computer program to record and analyze time use. The measurements are time in hours and count of tasks. Hours are best for some tasks but for others a count is better. Analyze and make notes to answer, where are you going wrong? And try corrections to see if they work. Repeat the cycle. Reused for research. The researcher looked at notes made like this for his research. He wanted to see if he could find general rules or tips for others and to see what the experience was for the subject of working like this. Chapter 6, Conclusions This project gave the home computer user or amateur researcher poor health. Therefore, it might not have been worthwhile because of this alone. It damaged his health with his skill set, amount he used his computer and his hardware and software. Computer projects are sometimes bad for physical health. As well, the projects were stressful. They took too long and wasted time that could have been spent on better goals. Also, they gave poor social skills from not having other things to talk about such as non-computer hobbies. Poor concentration, increased girth and other poor physical appearance are bad for social skills. The subject was in poor health from overusing his computer, doing too much typing and doing too much handwriting. Overusing a laptop causes a bad neck as the screen is at the wrong height. Much of his hand problems may have been from not being an adequately trained typist. Handwriting, as well is bad for hands. Also, he did not find speech recognition satisfactory for him. Now, speech recognition is better. So you have an advantage that you didn't have before. Also, 
He did not take breaks from his computer because he wanted to finish off work he was doing. Not taking breaks is bad for health. The project took many years as well as many hours each day. And while it is normally valuable to learn skills, it is not worthwhile if learning them damages your health. The project was educational, but you can learn from books and they have no dowsid. A dowsid of a computer project is that computers may inevitably harm your health when you use them a lot. How much is overuse? Advice the author read online said that using a home computer for more than five hours a week could cause problems. The subject was on his computer often for 35 hours a week. He also made mistakes in his project through not having satisfactory training as a researcher. And although he had done a course at a local college, his project was more ambitious and used skills not taught on his course. Besides which, he had forgotten most of the course and so this caused problems. Also, when he started this project, he couldn't find his course notes and only got similar textbooks to his course after some time. Mistakes made were data inputting poorly, not stopping collecting data when he'd enough data already and making poor long inadequate research notes. Also, typing poorly was a bad fault that you really would like to avoid. Typing is so important to use a computer well and healthily. And this is however modern you think computers are or however much you hear them talked about in different terms. Also, he was doing another project at the same time to write a novel. And he wrote a long diary. He constantly rewrote personal plans. This was as he was not satisfied with them. But he did, if only after a long time, use AWP properly to edit plans and did not retype the same thing. He didn't read others' research, as this would cost money he didn't have. Later, he was, though, able to find free reports and data sets online. If he had done this earlier, he might not have collected his own data or not as much of it. These projects took time or wasted time and spending so long on a computer made his social skills worse. And so many projects meant overusing his computer almost inevitably. So he was in poor health. And this poor health showed in his appearance. He used his computer for about 35 hours a week. This might be too long on one basic task even if it was not, as well too long to use a computer. Later, he found that two to four hours per day TV or reading was enough to have good social skills. Also, he did not take adequate breaks and so got poor concentration. This is bad for health and for social skills. Perhaps, to manage your time better, to reduce stress and to do more on your computer. You need skills and experience in computing and in other subjects. There is no better way of understanding computers than knowing what all the buttons and menus do. When you do tasks quickly, easily and to a reasonable standard, you work better, it improves self-esteem and you have time to do other things. You can work more productively using a computer by learning to do the real tasks better you do and for which you now use a computer. Examples of these real tasks for home users are any kind of writing or creative art. Learning computer and other skills for what you want to do means you spend less time on your computer doing these tasks and you are more relaxed doing them. As well as AWP for writing, you can write on paper and you can record your voice. Using these together, you can avoid so much computer time be more relaxed about your tasks generally and be more productive. You have to find the advantages to you of either paper or computers and strike a balance between them. Really, you do not want to have to have a long learning process just to use a computer at home. Nor might you want too many professional style tips to do a hobby or to do something you do in your home. It could just be that a computer is a complex machine and doesn't fit into the average home or lifestyle. You don't really need it for your home admin. 
nor do you need it to do hobbies. Complex machines often go wrong, need maintenance and take years of learning skills and getting experience to use them properly. Yet they can help you with things so you find them easier such as writing a story or drawing a picture. Or you could work on a home budget. But this is when you may have regular incomes and expenses and so you don't need a complicated budget. Or you just need to choose between alternative products, makes or brands so you buy ones that you can afford but that still give you what you want. Also, you would probably want to have enough left over to save. Have you ever heard anyone say, why don't you just buy the cheapest? That solves all your problems. Perhaps, you could just do this if you are short of money. It would save time and effort and cut worry if you did not do anything on your computer unless you could see it was a good hobby or it made anything you did easier and not harder. And you can save worry by not using your computer for any career, business, creative arts and nor any other ambition that you are not qualified to do. You might keep a good mind. Get a little reading done and do some exercise if you just went out and bought a newspaper every day. Or you could think of the advantages a computer does still give you and use it for those. As well, you may find using a computer is like a long and tiring journey with few interesting views and poor company at the end of it. This is even if you do it correctly. Worse, despite making the best possible efforts. Computers can be just a lot of stress and worry to some people. And they might be a lot of drudgery to learn them and to use them as well. But you might only see this when not stressed about them. Doing the project, the researcher often confirmed things he knew already. An example is the commonly heard comment that you don't have enough time to do everything you might want to do in life. Also, Personal hygiene is important to not wasting time or being able to do tasks. An example of poor personal hygiene is that doing laundry can be very unhygienic. But you can try things such as wearing gloves to handle dirty linen and not letting the dirty clothes touch your own clothes. One task done better can make big improvements in personal hygiene overall. This advice might be advice you had heard before but you had not needed for some time or you had otherwise forgotten it. So it seems doing all tasks well and particularly not doing one task very poorly is important. The subject's time management project caused poor time management in some ways and in others improved it. It took time to do the project. So by a principle of time management that you spend more time doing and less time on planning, then he managed his time poorly. Yet it did make him think about his time use that helped him use his time better. It motivated him to use his time better and to do things better so they took less time. Having more motivation sometimes changed things quickly that he had not done for some time as he would have liked. For example, the subject started reading as soon as he was motivated to do so. Improved reading was from going to the bookshop and choosing some books he liked, then taking them home and reading them. But other successes were slower. Small problems or things he didn't know yet often slowed him down. The projects only started looking and feeling good to do when he had already done a substantial amount of work towards them. Most of the time, the subject did just what he felt like. As well his goal setting was wrong. He still had a goal to read more despite being bored with books. This was because it was something that he felt he should do. But he now found books boring and so often didn't do much reading. So reading more should not have been a goal. Also, he wanted to watch only decent TV and this reduced how much TV he watched. And any TV really might have been alright. So he felt bored again. When he felt bored, he also felt stressed. So he went back on his computer. As well, though, his computer really fulfilled admirably the purpose of using up time. 
This was when he felt bored with everything else. And he had felt bored, despite, or because of, doing lots of hobbies and interests beforehand. His computer offered new ways of doing hobbies or of doing them better. Also, he could look up things online. However, he worried that he really should do goals of reading books and watching decent TV. And this caused problems he needn't have had. Yet his time management figures showed every week that he had not achieved his goals. These goals were reading books and watching decent TV. It was a worry to see every week that there was no improvement. Nor did he realize that improvements he sought were impossible. So he worried a lot trying and failing to do things. Still, he had set these goals himself so could have changed them if they were not working a lot sooner. Some people don't set any goals at all. Also, he wasted time planning when he did not keep to his plans and so made more plans. The most important plan you need to make is for physical health, such as for exercise, for diet, for hygiene and sleep. And you can keep a personal budget to manage your money. Overusing a computer reduces healthy activities such as exercise. And computers are bad for health in themselves. The only goal setting or time management advice that works might be not to bother with such a thing. And you do not have to do time management and nor do you have to use a computer for anything. You may use a computer at home the same as you might have kept a personal journal in the past, but you can do more on a computer than you can on paper. So you spend longer on a computer. Using a computer for a personal journal might mean using a computer for many hours each week. And you might feel that this is too long overall. Writing a journal is sometimes because of having personal problems or because of low self-esteem. Using a computer to boost self-esteem does not always help as soon as some people might like it. A computer is in some ways merely a way of keeping a personal journal. So a computer might help you if keeping a personal journal helps. However, in the end someone can take all his or her time on using a computer. Some people feel that they can keep a personal journal better on a computer than they can do so on paper. A dowsid is that viruses and computer crashes waste some of their time. And if you don't follow health advice, it might be a poor experience as it has long-term health implications. Otherwise, it is often just a harmless diversion. However, computer users really do have worries about health poor concentration and poor social skills if they use computers a lot. As well, the press has stories about computer privacy, financial losses and other issues. So you might have worries you can really do without. And this is when you may have enough worries already. Computers have health risks that paper doesn't. And using a computer overlong is almost certain to cause poor health. Some find computers help them do their hobbies better. But it seems many computer users felt stressed when they first got their computers. Perhaps as more young people learn about computers at school or college, the software improves and more information is available, new computer users will not have the same problems. Many respondents who said they used computers well admitted they hadn't done so to begin with and they often only kept their computers because they now understood them. But this was only after a long effort to start with. You don't need such problems you might think. But many did unless they'd had extensive computer training at college or work. However, some people had help from a friend and fewer problems. Almost everyone else felt stressed and had problems. These problems were such as health anxiety and managing their time poorly. Also, it was worries about the activities themselves that they did on their computers. This was when they had got their computer home, taken it out the box, plugged it in and got it to work. But then their problems really started. After a short while, 
they might regret buying it but the shop wouldn't take it back. So they tried other things on it. Or they tried to make a better go of it and didn't just put it away. And when they did succeed in what they were trying to do, it did not seem a worthwhile achievement in the end. Many respondents said that if they could go back in time and choose again, they would not have a computer. And they only keep it as after a long effort they better manage it and know now how to use it. One respondent even said he'd had a dream once that when he got his computer home and took it out the box he accidentally dropped it and then couldn't afford the repair charges. He said this had been a good dream but he'd had a massive come down when he woke up and he realized it wasn't true. The reader needs to decide for him or herself about having a computer. This is particularly if they use a computer a lot. You can change how you do existing tasks, you can use your computer only for some tasks or you don't have to do some things on it. A computer user might make an effort to use their computer less or not at all. As well, they can cut the health risks by using it less. They can decide for what they want to use a computer such as for something they are already good at that a computer makes easier. The home user might think about the upside and douse it to his hobby and of having a computer more generally. He might think that if he uses a computer for things he wants but with less dowsed, then it would be all right. To use a computer, someone might need extensive training. And this is particularly true for word processors or spreadsheets. Some software has cut down versions or home versions. And the home user can look up advice online using a browser without much training. Some find computer programs such as WPs and spreadsheets useful for some things. For example, you might find keeping an exercise chart motivating but others don't. You could have already kept one and so would feel it a bore keeping one again. You can decide if you have enough skills already or if you want more, would find getting them a useful challenge or it would make tasks more enjoyable. Also. You could just wait for the technology to improve. And then you can get out your old files and do something at a click of a button that took hours to do beforehand. You could have your health by waiting until then. Computers might improve in many ways. Computer screens have less radiation or generally, they might take less time to use. And, if you can do it better in the future then you might think that it is at least wastes time to do it now. However, they say that only someone who had a deep need for something and one they think computers might help them with would use computers. This is when so many people have heard of the Dowsid. At least, computers had this Dowsid until very recently. Deep needs are things like wanting to solve problems, changing your life or changing the world. Also, it is doing things like using a computer only out of profound boredom. Or it is a need you have to communicate when your own family or your real friends don't listen to you. They say that time like money is ubiquitous and you can spend it on anything. You can spend it on one thing as much as you could spend it on another. But computers genuinely waste your time if you don't use them correctly. Some would like to use one when they feel bored. But they can still become frustrated when they can't get computers to do things they want well, such as computers are meant to be good for hobbies and creative arts. Yet if these give computer users a lot of satisfaction and they do them well on a computer, then they might do them a lot and so have a dowsed from overusing their computers. And this is even if they did not find them frustrating and stressful just because their computer did not seem to work properly or it had viruses. Lastly, readers can decide if they want to do their own amateur research project. The End